So far, we've tackled the top three Dynasty Fantasy Football rookie wide receiver prospects. Today, we're starting to kick off the Tier 2 wide receivers with a lot of guys. Wide receiver four, Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. We're going to tackle his story from start to finish and talk about his Dynasty Fantasy Football scouting report in today's video. This is Tale of the Tape. If you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, check out all of the other Tale of the Tapes on this playlist. But with that being said, let's get into it. All right, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from the LSU Tigers. This is his tale of the tape, standing six foot three, 207 pounds. He was born October 8th, 2002. He will be 21.6 years old on April 27th on draft night, about a month away from right now. Brian Thomas Jr.'s college career is a little bit rocky. He was a late bloomer, didn't pick up football actually until he was about 16 years old, a sophomore in high school, and he rose to prominence nationally, getting recruited to the Louisiana State as a four-star wide receiver prospect, the number nine wide receiver prospect in the 2021 recruiting class, actually ranking higher than Marvin Harrison Jr., his teammate Malik Neighbors, and Xavier Worthy, who were all four-star wide receiver prospects that year. In 2021, he got on the field early, producing a respectable freshman season, 41 targets, uh, 359 yards, two touchdowns at LSU. In 2022, Malik Neighbors actually jumped him on the depth chart in terms of production when Malik Neighbors went for 1,000 yards and three touchdowns. Brian Thomas Jr. produced a mere 361 yards and five touchdowns his sophomore season. So he got out to a bit of a slow start in his high school career playing football because he was a basketball player as well. And then also getting out to a slow start in his college career didn't really produce until this season. Fast forward to 2023. He has a breakout season with Jaden Daniels, of course, at quarterback, the Heisman winning quarterback that he had. He had 87 targets, 68 catches, 1177 yards, 17 touchdowns, with which uh, led the SEC, playing, of course, alongside Malik Neighbors, who had a monster season, probably should have won the Bolitnikoff Award. So again, very challenging target competition, but Brian Thomas Jr. was still able to get his from a production standpoint. He has a bit of a clunky profile, like I said, because he didn't produce really his first two seasons in college. It reminds me a little bit of Jamison Williams in 2022 when he had the first two seasons at Ohio State, wasn't able to produce behind Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba and company. He goes and transfers and plays at Alabama with Heisman winning Bryce Young, which is exactly kind of the same situation here and has a monster year at the University of Alabama. So with Brian Thomas Jr., was it the offense? Was it the fact that he was just kind of learning the position still? To me, I think I still think he's a good prospect, but what we're aiming to find out here is how much of that can be accredited to playing alongside a stud like Malik Neighbors, playing with a Heisman winning quarterback like Jaden Daniels, and how much of it was uh, Brian Thomas Jr. actually getting better as a player. As you can see, when you line up him and Jamison Williams, it is a very, very similar prospect profile, not very productive first two years, and then having a nice little junior season there. So when it comes to his expected draft position, the way that NFL scouts are looking at Brian Thomas Jr., the NFL seems all aboard the wide receiver four hype train. Behind the top three guys, Brian Thomas Jr. is the one consistently mock draft as the next wide receiver off the board. His average draft position in NFL mock draft database is 18th overall, putting him right in the range to be drafted by the New Orleans Saints at 14, the Indianapolis Colts at 15, the Jacksonville Jaguars at 17, Bengals at 18, uh, Steelers at 20, maybe even the Cowboys at 24, Buccaneers at 26. Definitely a lot of good wide receiver landing spots in that area of the draft. So the stage is set for Brian Thomas Jr. He definitely is going to be a first round NFL draft pick in my opinion. The question is, does he have the traits needed to be a dynasty fantasy football superstar? And again, I want to reiterate that me and Danny have actually broken down Brian Thomas Jr.'s all 22 film on flockfantasy.com. We've also done Marvin Harrison, Romo Dunze, um, Malik Neighbors. We just recorded Xavier Worthy's yesterday. We're aiming to have about 20, give or take, of these film breakdowns broken down for you guys on the site before the NFL draft. So if you're curious why there's no film clips in this video, uh, YouTube doesn't actually let me do that anymore. So what we're going to do instead is break down their film in all 22 formats. So if you're interested in that, Flock Fantasy link is down below in the description. Number one trait that is required for wide receivers, in my opinion, is the thing I weight the heaviest in terms of wide receiver evaluation is your ability to create separation, your ability to get open. If we were playing 
um, you know, recess football right now, you would throw it to the player who is open the most often. Every prospect has what I'm calling their hinging trait, meaning their game hinges on their ability to get better in one area or their ability to show up in the NFL in this area. And again, this could be the drawing of a line between star wide receiver at the next level and bust at the next level. And to me, this is Brian Thomas's hinging trait because his route running, his separation ability, uh, ability is not where it needs to be at this point in time. Right now, he can improve on a lot of things, in my opinion. He can be an absolute star if he does improve on these things. But overall, I was disappointed with his route-to-route -route consistency, especially on short and intermediate routes. I thought his fundamentals weren't good. He showed his hands too early, for example. He was looking back at his quarterback against Alabama in particular. He had a hard time getting off of sticky cover corners like Kool-Aid McKinstry and Terry and Arnold, who both project to be first-round picks at corner in this class. And in that game in particular, he posted a 51.9 PFF receiving grade. And it was the most stark difference I saw in a single game of tape between Malik Neighbors, who's obviously a superstar level prospect, and Brian Thomas Jr. Malik Neighbors looked like he belonged, and Brian Thomas did not look like he belonged in that game. His route tree also, when you think about, you know, separation ability and route running, your route tree is also impactful at the next level. And his was severely limited at LSU. He was asked to do the DK Metcalf plan, basically run fast in a straight line, get, you know, short intermediate routes that are basically working off of a vertical route stem. So comebacks, curls, that kind of thing. He wasn't really asked to do a whole lot as a route runner, aside from go balls, fades, comebacks, and curls. That was the main source of his route tree. When I watched him run more complex routes, even like digs and outs and slants, anything in or out breaking, I was underwhelmed with his ability to change direction and kind of explode out of his breaks. I thought he was actually below average in this area, which is wild because, uh, because when we consider how athletic the guy is, he should be better in that area. So I'm not saying he was hopeless as a route runner because against single man coverage, if he was running one of those vertical routes, he definitely was surgical and he was going to take you to the cleaners basically. But if you can be an elite fantasy football wide receiver in the NFL, you can't just run those routes. Even DK Metcalf himself developed a longer route tree, a bigger route tree as he got acclimated to the NFL. He just needs to develop more tempo, better footwork, more use of head and shoulder fakes. And most importantly, he has to, and I repeat, has to get better at working off of physicality at the top of his break because six foot three, 207 pound wide receivers should not struggle to get off of tight coverage at the top of their routes as much as Brian Thomas Jr. did on his film. So again, we broke that down in the film breakdown. Route running is one of those traits that's really hard to explain without actually seeing what we're talking about. But to me, I think he needs a lot of work in this area. The nice thing is that he has the physical tools to be able to do that work. And of course, he's been productive at a young age and that's all green flags for that. But it is 100% the trait that's going to either catapult him into star territory at the next level if he can work on it, or it's going to make him an, an, an outright NFL draft bust. And as I'm going to talk about throughout this video, Brian Thomas Jr. to me is one of the more boomer bust prospects in this class at wide receiver. The next trait that we're going to get into is hands. And he has some redeeming qualities in the hands department. Of course, he's six foot three, 207 pounds. So that certainly helps him at the catch point because he does have a bigger frame. He posted a career contested catch rate of 47%, 53.8% in his 2023 breakout season. I will say though, I was disappointed with some of the drops, uh, career 9.3% drop rate, which is actually higher than Xavier Worthy's, which a lot of people give him crap for, but don't do the same thing for Brian Thomas. And also too, some of the inconsistencies really attacking the football is what I noticed and what me and Danny broke down in the tape breakdown on some plays, he works back to the ball like a true pro, especially on like curls and comebacks. But other plays, I saw him absolutely staring down Jaden Daniels, showing his hands way too early. And NFL defensive backs are just simply going to read what you're doing and intercept the ball, get their head around, you know, break up the pass, whatever they need to do. There's a play in particular against Florida State where specifically the defender slips and Brian Thomas telegraphs the route and he's able to get back up, recover, and knock the ball loose out of Brian Thomas Jr.'s hands. And again, the ball hits him in the hands and Thomas can't squeeze it, can't come down with it. So in the NFL, it's just too difficult to not have good fundamentals at the catch point, even if you're big and fast and strong and physical. And Brian Thomas is all of those 
those things, but his fundamentals are not there. He's just a raw player. It's sprinkled throughout his entire game. The question is, can you coach that out of him? Can you get him up to speed at the next level? I still really like his upside, but these first two traits are literally the basics of playing wide receiver. Get open and catch the football. And if there's enough flaws in your game in those two areas, he could be an outright bust because of them. However, if he does get those things corrected, he could become a superstar. And I'll tell you why here and now. The theme of this video is basically going to be me saying Brian Thomas Jr. needs a little bit of time, needs a little bit of work, and dynasty players are not patient. Look at Quentin Johnston. I said the same thing about him last year, and tell me what Quentin Johnston's market price is right now. I'm not saying that Brian Thomas is as flawed of a prospect as Quentin Johnston was. I'm just saying if prospects need a little bit of work at the next level, it might take them a year, two years to get acclimated to the NFL. And we as dynasty players are just simply not willing to wait on these prospects to develop at the next level. So yards after catchability, number three trait that we're going to talk about. This area, he is pretty spectacular in. So you're not going to hear me say many negative things about his yards after catchability. It wasn't even his role at LSU, to be honest, because you look at number eight, Malik Neighbors, how good he was after after the catch and the opportunities he got to showcase that Brian Thomas didn't really run a route tree that was conducive to yak opportunities. He's very impressive when he does do it though, because he is a great open field mover. We know how fast he is after he ran at the combine. He has great bursts. His his 150 10-yard split was the same as Xavier Worthy's. So that 0 to 10-yard quickness is very, very good and honestly elite, especially for his size. Posting 5.7 yards after catch per reception in 2023 and forcing 29 missed tackles in his career on 127 catches, good for a 22% rate. Those are extremely strong numbers for a big-bodied wide receiver, especially one, like I said, who is not getting targets that are conducive to yards after catch opportunities. When you're getting targeted down the field, for the most part, you're not really making a lot of people miss after the catch. The guys that pad their yak stats usually get screen passes and short passes, and that's not Brian Thomas Jr.'s game, or at least that's what not what he was asked to do at LSU. So it's a big time check mark here that those yak numbers stack up with the likes of, you know, short yards after the catch threats at that size. So very, very big check mark in the yards after catch ability. The question for Brian Thomas Jr. is not once he gets the ball in his hands, because once he gets the ball in his hands, he's very good with it. It's the process of getting the ball in his hands, running the route and catching the football that I have a little bit more qualms with. So uh, three level ability. Again, we want wide receivers that affect all three levels of the field, short, intermediate and deep. That's how you get the most targets at the next level. The positive here for Brian Thomas Jr. is that he has the hard part down pat, right? The hardest thing to do is get down the field, win against corners and tight coverage. It's much easier in the NFL for a downfield threat like Brian Thomas Jr to develop more of a short and intermediate game than the other way around, especially considering the tools that he has, the size, the athleticism that he has. Just 4.6% of his targets came on screen passes, and he was lined up on 87% of his routes on the outside. So those are both green flags. He's not getting fed targets that he doesn't really deserve. He's an X wide receiver at the next level, and he posted a perfect in 2023 99.9 PFF receiving grade on targets downfield of 20 plus yards with an absurd 15 catches on 22 targets. That is a really, really high efficiency rate for downfield targets. He also had 670 yards and 12 touchdowns on 15 catches. So again, downfield ability is all check marks across the board. He can affect the downfield game better than most receivers in this entire class and probably the best of any receiver in this class. I will say though, there was some broken plays. There was some inflated numbers on those plays where you know a DB like slipped or whatever, or he just flat out straight out ran somebody. But the bottom line is, I will say I'm not concerned at all with his ability to be a deep threat at the next level. My real concern is that all he becomes, because if he doesn't develop more of a short and an intermediate game, we could be talking about, you know, Marquez Valdez Scantling at the next level running wind sprints. I don't think he's got that low of a floor, to be honest. I think he's a little better than that, even in his worst case scenario. But his inability to command targets consistently on a full route tree is a concern for me at this moment in time. Next trait we get into is athleticism. And this guy is a sick athlete, man. We saw it at the combine. His RAS score is 9.97, which if you're not familiar with that, that is a 99th percentile RAS score, elite speed, elite burst. His 10 yard split, like I said, was as good as Xavier Worthy's. His RAS score is identical to one Julio Jones. And I know his game is not really comparable to Julio Jones at this point in time, 
but that is the range of outcomes. Like he has that high of a ceiling. If he can put it all together, the vertical and the broad jump show that explosiveness, the 10 yard split show that explosiveness. So we're not just talking about like Tez Walker, for example, who's straight line fast. We're talking about a guy who's also very agile, who's also very explosive, can jump obviously as well. We know that athleticism doesn't always translate one-to-one to fantasy production at the wide receiver position. But when you win with athleticism, like Brian Thomas Jr. does, and you test like this, it makes me feel a lot better about that projection in the NFL. It's also confirmation that he does, in fact, have a very high ceiling if he can put it all together. My doubt's more in the likelihood that he hits his ceiling rather than the fact that it's actually there. So again, people talk about, oh, this wide receiver has a high ceiling all the time. But the likelihood is what I'm concerned with. It's like if he has a 5% chance to become a stud alpha wide receiver in the NFL and Lad McConkey, for example, has a 50% chance to become a PPR wide receiver too or better, I'm going to go with Lad McConkey just as an example. Brian Thomas Jr. has a higher ceiling than Lad McConkey, but the likelihood of him actually achieving that ceiling is the question marks that I have. And part of it is because of his production profile. And it's generally solid, right? 17 touchdowns in the SEC while sharing the field with Malik Neighbors, who's a absolute stud wide receiver prospect that's good 2.86 yards per team pass attempt in 2023 again while sharing the field with Malik Neighbors that's also good however and again I know you have to contextualize these numbers with Malik Neighbors's presence but a 21.4 percent target share a career best 75.1 PFF receiving grade which has actually been quite predictive collegiate to the NFL and project, uh, projecting fantasy wide receivers minus 0.38 yards per team pass attempt over expected. So relative to guys who went on to have a top 24 season, a negative number is a bad thing. It means that you're not likely to be as good in the NFL as those guys were. A breakout age of 20.9. Like I said, he was a late bloomer, only productive for one season. And he just so happened to have a Heisman winning quarterback in that season. It's difficult to look at Brian Thomas Jr. and say that he is a bust proof guy. There's blemishes here, and I'm sure his reception perception profile will agree with that as well once Matt Harmon breaks him down. I'm very curious to see what he thinks of his route running. If I had to answer the question point blank right now, will Brian Th- Thomas Jr. ever become a fantasy wide receiver one and a true alpha in the NFL? I would say at this moment, no, he does not. I think that he has a little bit of an overrated ceiling in terms of likelihood that he hits it. Now, He could become a very solid wide receiver too, number two wide receiver in a great offense if he goes to say the Cincinnati Bengals or the Jacksonville Jaguars or one of these teams that he's being projectedly mocked to. I think I see the range of outcomes as more likely being like a faster Mike Williams, a Martavis Bryant, maybe a Nico Collins, what he's developed into for the Houston Texans. Some of the subjective things that also factored into my grade, and then I'll break it down in a second here. He's very raw all around. Like I said, it factors in with his hands, his route running, his press coverage technique needs work. His most common little mistakes that he makes is also a factor of him being a raw player and inexperienced player. He ended up on the ground sometimes when I was watching him run routes. And I talked about that in Marvin Harrison's film breakdown that I'm like, he never ends up on the ground and these two guys are the same size. He also drifts into defenders versus zone coverage he stares down his quarterback making his uh, making it easy for a defender to watch his eyes and watch his hands so again little stuff it's all correctable it's just a lot of things piled up in my opinion he's got work to do and to be honest like I said it makes me a little bit nervous knowing that the dynasty community is not patient with raw wide receivers to me the most raw two wide receivers coming out of school the last two seasons were Traylon Burks and Quentin Johnston so the fact that those two guys are off to the dynasty who cares land is not something that I feel really comfortable with with Brian Thomas Jr. I also think his effort as a run blocker was subpar. I think toughness in general at the top of his routes at the catch point. It was average, but to be honest, given his size, I wanted to see a little bit more of that. When you watch, bottom line is, this is the easiest eye test I can ever tell anybody. When you watch number eight on LSU, Malik Neighbors, and you watch number 11 on LSU, Brian Thomas Jr., on the same field, in the same offense, same set of conditions, it's just a sizable difference in prospect caliber to me. And, and that's... So unfair to Brian Thomas because Malik Neighbors is such a good prospect, one of the best I've seen over the last three or four years. But when you see that big of a difference, it just shows that their ceilings are not necessarily comparable, in my opinion. Malik Neighbors is just so much better to me at this point in time. He's actually younger than Brian Thomas Jr. too, so that factors in as well. The final grade that I have on Brian Thomas Jr., I know it sounds like I've been kind of shitting on him throughout this video, but I still believe he has an 83.5 grade out of 100, which basically makes him a top 50 NFL draft talent. He's currently ranking in that massive tier of tier two wide receivers with Xavier Worthy, with Lad McConkey, with Adonai Mitchell, with Keon Coleman, 
with Xavier Leggett. There's so many dudes in this tier. I have him right now as my wide receiver six behind Xavier Worthy and Lad McConkey. The strengths are so straightforward. He's an elite athlete, great deep threat, very good after the catch, very good explosion, and good production in the SEC. Those are all green flags. The red flags, like I said, they're mostly film-related. Feel like his shortcomings as a route runner, inconsistent hands, attacking the football, those subjective things that I just documented, and also the market share production that he had at LSU, which is also very predictive, and the one-year wonder nature of his profile make him the single most boomer bust prospect in this entire class. For his grade, he would have graded similarly to guys like Jamison Williams, like I said. I think that prospect profile-wise, him and Jamison Williams are nearly identical. Jahan Dotson, Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore, Chris Olave, Zay Flowers, Josh Downs, and Quentin Johnson. The range of his grade is the guys that I had graded in that area. And there's definitely some hits there. Chris Olave, Zay Flowers, guys like that. But there's also some misses there, right? Jamison Williams, Quentin Johnston, um, maybe Jahan Dotson, Rashad Bateman, and those guys you consider misses as well. Over the past three drafts, those guys all had grades 83 to 85. So they're top 50 talents worthy of first round or second round NFL draft capital. But if you asked me, would I take this guy in the top 15 to 20 in the draft? I would not, personally. I think that the earliest he should be considered in the NFL draft is 24 to the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think he should go any earlier than that, given the boom-bust nature of his profile. But again, if he goes to the right landing spot, and the Cowboys would certainly be one of them, I do believe that he has the upside to potentially become a stud wide receiver in the NFL, and at least a wide receiver two or better in fantasy. I mentioned some of my comps already for him. Um, Ceiling-wise, I see like a Nico Collins-like ceiling for him. That that's the player that I really like at the next level. And if you recall, it took Nico Collins three years to reach that ceiling. So that's the rationale there for that comp. I also think floor wise, like I said, I think he can be a Mike Williams, a Martavis Bryant, boomer bust wide receiver three for fantasy, depending on how good of an offense he is playing in. Like I said, ideal landing spot. Let's take the Nico Collins formula, elite quarterback, number two or number one, a option in your offense, and you're in a great offense. That makes the Jacksonville Jaguars a good fit because he can work as a good complement to Christian Kirk. That makes the Cincinnati Bengals a good fit because he could work as a complement to Jamar Chase in the long term, assuming they move on from T. Higgins. But I do think the absolute best fits for him are the Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills. He may not make it to that pick. Like I said, it's possibly he goes 15, 14, 17, 18, 19, whatever. But I do think if he, I would, I would have concerns if he went like 14 to New Orleans or 15 to Indianapolis or any team really where he's expected to be the number one wide receiver from day one and he doesn't have an elite passing quarterback throwing him the ball. To me, the Cowboys, the Bills, the Chiefs, those types of teams are the best available teams that could go after Brian Thomas Jr. In terms of rookie draft outlook, startup wise, I have him ranked wide receiver 34 among veterans and other rookies. To me, I would be comfortable if you're doing startups pre-draft right now, spending a fifth to seventh round pick on Brian Thomas Jr., depending on your team makeup, depending on you know how your room values rookies and that kind of thing. Rookie draft wise, I believe he is my wide receiver um, six. Like I said, he is also my 110 in super flex leagues and my 107 to 108, depending uh, on if you would need Caleb Williams in a one quarterback league. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit below market on Brian Thomas Jr. Most people think he's the 108, 109 in Superflex Leagues. I am at 110. Again, I think he's a worthwhile risk to take. I do think that his profile is good enough that I'm okay taking that risk. I just don't know if I'm going to end up with a ton of shares because if I'm faced with the decision on the clock, Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkie, or Brian Thomas Jr., I'm ranking Brian Thomas Jr. third of that group. And landing spots and draft capital will factor in, but I don't imagine that'll change a whole lot post-draft unless those guys get horrible landing spots in Brian Thomas gets an elite one. So I realize, like I said, that's a bit lower than most people have him, but I'm just telling you guys my opinion. You clicked on this video because you wanted to know what I thought of Brian Thomas Jr. I am okay missing the boat on Brian Thomas Jr. to some degree because I think there will be buying opportunities ahead because I think he's going to develop slowly. I think that people are underrating what his downside risk is and just looking at the ceiling, which is something that people did with Quentin Johnston last year. And again, I'm not comparing the prospects. I think he's a better prospect than QJ, but it is a similar situation, at least in terms of a raw player that needs development at the next level. So again, if you guys want the film breakdown, the full all 22, me and Danny go through Brian Thomas Jr. He's a little bit higher on Brian Thomas than I am. So it was a good back and forth that we had. Head on over to flockfantasy.com. Promo code FSE gets you 30% off any of the packages. It gets you seven days for free. So you can check out the Brian Thomas Jr. film breakdown without paying anything. You get six months for free as well when you sign up annually. It is the best place to
to be if you're a dynasty player. Everything from film breakdowns, like I talked about, we're going to have 15, 20 of these by the time the NFL draft comes around, uh, along. We also have our draft guide, which is 50 prospects deep of write-ups, grades, strengths, weaknesses, all that good stuff. All of the draft guides of the other creators on the site as well. Mason, Zach, and Badake of the Dynasty land and the Dynasty domain guys there. Bonus content out the wazoo. Priority to Dynasty decisions episodes. Our Dynasty rankings, our rookie rankings, everything you could need. Trade value charts, these player cards that I showed, and so much more. Link down below in the pinned comment and in the description as well. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.